Could Thomas Partey be on his way out of Arsenal? Yes, people. Why? We'll work back to another Arsenal transfer news video. As always, if you love being kept up to date with daily Arsenal transfer news videos, this is the place we make sure you subscribe down below. More to 3,000 subscribers. And I'd absolutely love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Do you want Partey to stay or go? Let's get straight into the tweet by Fabrizio Romano today saying, Understand Saudi clubs are prepared to pay 40 million euros in instalments to Arsenal for Thomas Partey. He's a concrete option for Saudi. His exit is possible, as revealed on Sunday. No decision yet on player side. He also has approaches from Europe. No deal. Uh, no new deal talks at Arsenal Football Club. And this has been Arsenal's policy for a while now, right? Ever since we had the new regime coming in with Arteta, Edu, etc., they've come to the conclusion that when a player has two years left in their deal, we either renew or sell. And I like the idea. I genuinely do, because I think it leaves the ambiguity out of the window where a player's down to their final year and we could get mugged off because they might want to go and we end up sending them for less money. Now, Thomas Partey's deal is set to expire in 2025, which is not next summer, it's the summer after. And therefore, he's got two years left. And Arsenal comes to, the, I guess, the conclusion that we're not going to offer him a new deal. Therefore, we have to sell him now. And to be honest, selling Partey, it would not be what I would personally do, to be honest with you guys. Look, Partey is a quality player. I know he can't be fit for 38 games. I know every now and then he's going to take annual leave because he's got a court case or whatever it is. I don't know. I'm not going to say what it is. Though. I have no clue what it is. But you know what I mean. He's either injured or something's going on, something fishy behind the scenes. The man can't stay fit for 38 games. He's going to go missing for a Man City away game or something like that. Do you get what I mean? So with Thomas Partey, I do think we can upgrade. I genuinely believe so. But it's got to a point, right, where if you're going to sell Partey for 40 million euros, which isn't a bad amount of money, by the way, for a 29-year-old, for a player that you're not going to renew their contract anyway, who can you replace him with that's going to be better than Thomas Partey? Because this isn't the time to just replace a player. This is the time to not only replace, but improve upon. The obvious one for me would be Moises Caicedo from Brighton and Hove Albion. I think he's a quality player. I think he is the successor for Partey at Arsenal. Case in point, they're in the flesh for us. Premier League proven, 21 years of age, can do that aggressive anchor, dominating role in midfield, can play right back as well if he wants to play there with Jorginho in midfield. Shalata wants to implement that style. The problem is, Caicedo is going to cost an awful lot of money. And right now, it seems Chelsea have seemed to agree terms with Caicedo at least. And there could be a deal going through on that side. And it's absolutely ludicrous to, to, to think, but by Arsenal signing habits, which is basically a done deal now, we've kind of helped Chelsea to buy Moises Caicedo from Brighton. So you look at it and you go, what other CDMs are out there? I mean, Newcastle are about to spend 70 million euros on Sandro Tonali, who for me isn't a, isn't a world-class central defensive midfielder, but he plays that position at least. Romeo Lavia from Southampton, he's a good player, but that's a 19-year-old. Do you want to go into the new season trying to win the Premier League and Champions League with a with a 19-year-old central defensive midfielder? I mean, not for me personally. I think he could be a quality player one day, but you shouldn't be hedging your bets on him starting. Does Declan Rice come in and be the central defensive midfielder? Potentially. But I've heard reports that if Arsenal do end up sending Thomas Partey, we will guarantee bring in another midfielder for absolute sure. It can't be Gundogan because he's on his way to Barcelona as well. So this is the thing with Arsenal, right? This is why. I know Arsenal have moved fairly quickly on certain deals. I know we've, we've got Kai Havertz through the door and Declan Rice potentially could be coming through as well as uh, Julian Timber as well from Ajax. But it's not quick enough. Because suddenly, our, our options are going other places. Gundogan was one of Arsenal's options. Whether he was going to come to Arsenal or not, it doesn't matter really. Case in point, he's gone to Barcelona now. That's one of our options off the table. Moises Caicedo, another one that was talked about at the start of the window. Arsenal had interest. We know in January he submitted two bids. I covered it on this channel. A £60 million bid and a £70 million bid. He looks like he's on his way to Chelsea now. That's another one out the window sooner rather than later, a lot of our options are going to be going. So, look, if Saudi Arabian clubs want Thomas Partey, we know the Saudi Arabian policy is splash the cash. If they want to spend £40 million on Partey, that's a good amount of money. But you can't sell Partey if you don't get replacement in the door. That's how I look at it, right? So, if I'm Arsenal and we get uh, Moises Caicedo and Dos somehow, some way, by all means, let Partey go. By all means, man. £40 million for Partey, spend an extra £40 million on Caicedo. So, you spend £80 million on Caicedo by offset by the Partey deal. Bing, bang, bosh. I love that deal perfectly. But if you're selling Partey to bring in someone like Lavia, it's a very risky move. Very, very risky move. Because I'm a massive fan of Lavia, don't get me wrong. I think there's, there's been cases in the past where relegated players like Wijnaldum, Andy Robertson, etc. have come back to Premier League clubs and done absolutely fantastic. But the central defence midfield position, guys, is the most important position on the pitch in my eyes. Genuinely, your CDM can make or break your season. It's no surprise, it's no coincidence that ever since Manchester United bought Casemiro in, they've been doing so well and got Champions League places and won the Carabao Cup. Equally, you've got Brighton with Moise Caicedo. Equally, Jao Paulinho with, uh, sorry, Jao Paulinho with Fulham. And then, of course, Rodri with Man City. Their player of the tournament in the Champions League. Your central defence midfielder is your rock, man. You need experience there. You need a real tenacious midfielder, combative as well, aggressive. And although Romeo has the capacity, Romeo Levy has the capacity to have these traits, 
he's not a polished article. He's a 19-year-old. He's not someone you can rely on in the big moments. When the going got tough for Arsenal, we were all good from, from the start of the season, August, until about March. We were cooking, man. We were doing so well. But as soon as the April and May hit, as soon as the graphic came up on Sky Sports saying race for the title, it got a little bit hot. It got a little bit too pressurised for the Arsenal players and we crumbled. So, look... If it ends up being Romeo Lava, I'll have to back it. But I think it's a very risky strategy from Arsenal. Edu, I hope they know what they're doing, man. I think something that's good, though, is look at the type of profiles Arsenal are bringing in. Declan Rice, captain of West Ham. Julian Timber, captain of Ajax. I think when Arteta has identified that, he needs more leaders in the squad, right? Look at Man City's team. Leaders galore. Even if you're not wearing the armband, you're a leader. Rodri, case in point, that man's a leader. Ruben Diaz, that man is a leader. Do you get what I mean? I feel like the Arsenal... We have some leads. I thought Xhaka potentially was a leader, but obviously he's going. Zinchenko maybe to an extent, but he's got a mistake in him. He's not someone you can rely on defensively for sure. Erdgaard was our captain, but I think everyone knows that Erdgaard is a player that lets, lets, lets his football do the talking. He's not a leader in terms of his voc uh, vocal ability. So Declan Rice is a definite leader. Julian Timber, young captain of Ajax at 21 years old. He can definitely got the traits to be a leader one day. So I think Arteta, I like the fact that he's gone for these leader type, leadership type qualities in players. And let's see what we build upon. Of course, the Arsenal transfer news is going to start to ramp up for sure. The Kai Havertz deal is basically done. Fabrizio Romano tweeted, here we go. My next video will be a Kai Havertz welcome to Arsenal video. Identifying his strengths, weaknesses and potential Arsenal fit. I promise you, you do not want to miss it. I do it for every single player Arsenal fan. I've been doing it for the past like two, three seasons now. The videos have gone down really well. So make sure you hit the bell notifications as well as subscribing. So you don't miss that particular video. In terms of other Arsenal content, of course, I'll be releasing transfer news videos daily as soon as we hear stories regarding them. I'm hoping for escalations in Timber. I'm hearing some underground reports that we could be going in for a second bid that's going to be accepted by Ajax for Jurian Timber. I wouldn't hold our breath right now because I'm going to wait for the reputable sources like David Ornstein and Fabrizio Romano to talk about it. But from some of the underground sources, the less reputable ones... We're hearing reports of that. And of course, the Declan Rice deal. I feel like this one's been dragging on far longer than it should. But I'm confident. I've reiterated it throughout this whole t summer to you guys that Declan Rice will be an Arsenal player, in my opinion. I just think there's too many signs pushing in that direction for it not to happen now. The player wants Arsenal. Arsenal want the player. West Ham want to sell. You're going to meet in the middle. A deal's going to happen. It's just a matter of when. I do think Declan Rice will be an Arsenal player. Hopefully this week, by the end of this week or early next week, we will have final indication that Arsenal have agreed terms with Declan Rice. Potentially, hopefully on the third bid, it will happen. And then Declan Rice will officially be an Arsenal player. That's what we're going to hope and see. But in the meantime, Arsenal fans, I guess be excited. The Kai Havertz deal's over the line. There's going to be a lot of activity this summer. We've been calling for it for a long time. Arsenal being very, very active. And one of the players that could be leaving is Thomas Partey. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below regarding Thomas Partey's potential exit from Arsenal. Do you like it? Do you not like it? I mean, a lot of fans not, not liking this one. I understand why, because Thomas Partey's a massive player for us. I know he tailed off towards the end of the season, but he's still a humongous player for us. You can't rely on Jorginho as your central defensive midfielder going forward. And God forbid Declan Rice gets injured next season, you're left with a massive hole in there. So very risky strategy from Arsenal. Let's see what they do. We've got a trust in the club. But yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Let me know who you would want to replace Thomas Partey with. Do you want Lavia? Do you want Moises Caicedo? Is there other options out there like Gravenberch, for example, you would want? I'd love to hear it in the comment section down below. Drop a like down below so this video gets out to more people in the algorithm. And also make sure you subscribe if you're new around here and hit bell notifications so you never miss a video by myself. I'm dropping daily Arsenal transfer news videos. I've been Wifey, but I appreciate you all for tuning in and I hope to see you all in my next one. Take care.